children wouldn't cut their feet. So there's an example again of complete and total blindness on the part of this family of five. Here was, uh, to them, a raggedy bag lady, probably mad, and yet what she was really doing was protecting the feet, the feet of, of their children and other people's children by picking up glass from the beach. One time I was coming out of a gas station myself, I am 54 years of age, and I was on foot walking towards my car, and somebody driving by shouted, I hate you, old man! And the words, I hate you, old man, took flesh in me and burned into me, and I carried around them around in my mind for two or three days. It gave me a very cold feeling that somebody would do this. But slowly over the next um, weeks and months, I heard inside myself the voice of God. You are my child. The reason the world does not recognize you is that it never recognized the Son, Jesus, when he came among us. What you shall later be has yet to be revealed, and when it is revealed, you shall be like him. And that's a very extraordinary message here, that the world looks at us as old or young or stupid or whatever they look at us, but when God sees us, he sees his own beloved children. So back once more time now to what just happened. Finally, one of the twelve, Peter, grasps who Jesus is, and yet um, Jesus then gave them strict orders not to tell anyone about him. Why would he do that? At the time that Jesus appeared in Israel, uh, Israel was under the control of the Roman Empire. There were Roman soldiers in the streets. And the people were looking for a political messiah, somebody who would drive out the Romans. But Jesus uh, was not a political messiah. Jesus came to save the last sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus was coming to build the kingdom of God. So he didn't want the people to carry him off and make him king because he wasn't a political messiah. Hence he tells them, don't tell anybody who I am. But if he's not a political messiah, what kind of a messiah is he? What kind of a savior is he? And now he gives us a rather frightening look at the type of savior he is. We are now in verse uh, 31 of the 8th chapter of Mark's Gospel. And Jesus began to teach them that he himself, the Son of Man, was destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and to be put to death, and after three days to rise again. And he said all this quite openly. Then taking him aside, Peter started to argue with him but turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's way. So Jesus, as soon as his apostles realize who he is, now begins to teach them that he is a suffering savior, a suffering messiah. If one had really been paying attention to the story of Jesus' birth, the signs of this were already hidden away when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. If you remember, when Jesus was born, there was already no place for him in the inn, and so he had to be born in a stable uh, where animals dwelt. And nearby on the hills, looking after sheep, were shepherds. And these shepherds were chosen by God to be the first witnesses of the birth of his Savior. Shepherds were of such low class in the house of Israel, in the, in the country of Israel, that they weren't allowed to testify in a court of law, and they weren't also allowed up into the temple in Jerusalem. And yet here they were um, on the hills outside Bethlehem, raising sheep and looking after them. These sheep uh, were fit 
to be offered as sacrifices in the temple in Jerusalem. So there's a message uh, here straight away that these people were chosen by God. These people who were considered completely and totally unfit were considered the first witnesses of the birth of Jesus, whereas the people who were in charge, the leaders of the people, King Herod, the rich and the powerful, were considered unfit by God. There's a second message, too, that um, Jesus is born in a stable because he is to be the Lamb of God. He is the one who will be led like a lamb to the slaughter, like a sheep before his shearers, he will be silent, not opening his mouth. And he will offer up his life as the Lamb of God for the sins of all mankind. Now this is too much for Peter, and he begins to argue with Jesus. And Jesus rebukes him and says, get behind me, Satan, because the way you are thinking is not God's way, but man's way. Then Jesus lays in front of us, you and I, today, the conditions for following him. Jesus called the people and his disciples to him and said to them, if anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself, take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but anyone who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. What again then is it for a man to win the whole world and lose his soul? And indeed, what can a man offer in exchange for his life? For if anyone in this adulterous and sinful generation is ashamed of me and of my words, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And he said to them, I tell you solemnly, there are some standing here who will not taste death because before they see the kingdom of God come with power. Now, here is where Jesus lays out for us the conditions for following him. And he very simply says, if anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but anyone who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. We need to take a very deep look at what all this means uh, to be a Christian, to carry the cross, who is Jesus? Who is the Christ? So I'm just going to digress a little bit for a moment to go back to the basics. The name Jesus in the Hebrew language means God saves. So what is Jesus' last name? Actually, it's Ben Joseph, which means son of Joseph. Now, most people would think that Jesus' last name was Christ. Well, it isn't. Christ is not a last name, it's a title, Jesus the Christ. The Christ. So let's back up a bit. What does the Christ mean? It means the anointed one. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit of God, so much so that he said of himself, whoever sees me sees God. And he said, I and the Father are one. So if you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. He is the perfect image of the invisible God. Now, supposing you believe this at this stage of the program, uh, now comes the question of not just believing, but following in the footsteps of Christ. Remember, faith without good works is dead. So what is a Christian? A Christian is a follower of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. A Christian is a lover of Jesus. A Christian, with the help of God's Holy Spirit, accepts Jesus without reservation as the Son of God and as God. A Christian submits and conforms his or her whole life to Jesus and to his life and message. A Christian is a man or woman who desires to be completely possessed by the Christ so that he or she no longer lives, but Christ lives in them. Jesus himself said, 
If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him deny himself, take up his cross every day, and follow me. Now, what is this thing called the cross? What does he mean, take up the cross? Sometimes you'll see in our towns uh, men or women uh, dressed in white uh, robes, and you'll see them carrying a cross of some kind to the city. Is that what Jesus is talking about? So what is the cross, and what does it mean to take it up every day? I've wrestled with the meaning of this for years, so to the best of my knowledge, the cross is two things. First, it has to do with accepting whatever happens to you like Jesus did. He accepted being led like a lamb to the slaughter, being despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. So the cross is accepting life as it is with its joys, sorrows, sicknesses, health, anxieties, etc., etc. It's like the marriage vows. Do you accept life as it is, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, keeping your eyes on Jesus until death brings you together? Second, the cross as well seems to be the daily dying to sin and the invitation to sin that comes to us through our own pride, our own covetousness, our own lust, our own anger, our own envy, our own gluttony, our own sloth. My biggest struggle used to be fighting envy, which is a diabolical sin, because through the envy of the devil, sin entered the world, and with sin came death. St. John Vianney, a priest who lived in the last century, sums up both aspects of the cross and the Christian when he says, there is no doubt about it, a person who loves pleasure, who seeks comfort, who flies from anything that might spell suffering, who is over-anxious, who complains, who blames, and who becomes impatient at the least little thing that does not go his way. A person like that is a Christian only in name. He is only a dishonor to his religion, for Jesus Christ said so. Anyone who wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross every day of his life, and follow me. Self-denial, then, is at the very heart of the Christian message, day after day, to go against ourselves and follow in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. By way of conclusion, Minister Joe Wright delivered the following prayer at the new session of the Kansas Senate. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask your forgiveness and to seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, Woe to those who call evil good, but that is exactly what we have done. We have lost our spiritual balance and reversed our values. We confess that we have ridiculed the absolute truth of your word and called it pluralism. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have killed our unborn children and called it choice. We have shot abortionists and called it justifiable. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building self-esteem. We have abused power and called it politics. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O God, and know our hearts today. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. Guide and bless these men and women who have been sent to direct us to the center of your will and to openly ask these things in the name of your Son, the living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all for this week. God willing, we will meet on the air again next week. If you wish to receive the blessing of God, please bow your head. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom Aleikum. 
Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. In addition to our pasture mowing and tractor services, including zero-turn mowers for your fence line finish, we also offer rototilling and fence row spraying. We are family-owned and operated, licensed and insured, and farm-ready. Powell Gene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com, 352-629-2440. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. Gene is a proud United States veteran. There's a staycation right here in town. It's Super 8 Motel Ocala, right down the road on 40, just west of I-75. And they're pet friendly. <coughs> Have truck parking. <coughs> Free breakfast. Yum, yum. A swimming pool. A kiddie pool. <laughs> and veterans get 10% off. It's a staycation at Super 8 Ocala. Call today, Super 8 Ocala at 352-629-8794. Again, 352-629-8794. W-O-C-A. Ocala. USA Radio News with Lance Pride. The irony is real. A free speech rally is attacked with violence as counter-protesters storm the event Saturday in San Francisco. The demonstration staged by conservative activists turned ugly after several hundred counter-protesters outnumbered and attacked those gathered, throwing bottles over police. Philip Anderson, the organizer of the event, posted photos on his social media of his bloody mouth. He said Antifa protesters attacked him for no reason. No one was arrested. Law enforcement groups are appalled by Vice President Joe Biden for suggesting training police to shoot suspects in the leg. So instead of anybody coming at you, the first thing you do is shoot to kill, you shoot them in the leg. There's ways you have to do more background checks in terms of whether or not the person coming in passes certain psychological tests. The Detectives Endowment Association said Friday, Biden's suggestion that cops should shoot someone in the leg if they're coming at them is insulting and demonstrated his incompetence. USA Radio News. Welcome to Tax Talk with Hollywood legend Bob Eubanks. You know, as part of Hollywood for a long time, I've seen my fair share of celebrities get in trouble with the IRS. Well, there's one name I trust, the Tax Defense Group. They're the most trusted name in tax. So if you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS, you really need to call my friends at the Tax Defense Group. Ignoring the IRS is not the solution. They can garnish your paycheck, levy your bank accounts, seize your home or business. But the Tax Defense Group could put a stop. Balance of nature is fruits and vegetables in a capsule, changing the world one life at a time. You guys, your customer service and everything, you guys are great. And the commercials talk about it, but I don't know if it really gives it true justice. People need to know. This is maybe the most amazing product I've ever tried. It's so pure. It tastes so good. I'm just blown away by it. Balance of Nature is now offering 35% off on any new preferred order. Go to balanceofnature.com today and use discount code... USA. The Montana Senate race heats up. USA Radio News Timberg reports. As Democrats try to regain control of the Senate, they're trying to flip Montana from red to blue. Where current Democratic Governor Steve Bullock. What I've been able to do as uh, governor, I want to bring that to the Senate. Is running against incumbent Senator Steve Daines. We need help from those all across our country. We want to make sure that this Senate seat stays in Republican hands. The never-ending battle over public land use has voters crossing party lines in some cases. Dane's voters wanting the land to be open up. Meanwhile, Bullock supporters are wanting more preservation. Something like 80% of voters see it as one of their major issues. And particularly among independent voters, public lands is, is even more critical. Eric Austin with Montana State University. Currently, according to the Real Clear Politics average, Danes has a 3.3% lead. The state of Montana has three electoral votes in the Electoral College. USA Radio News. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-215-5141. 800-215-5141. That's 800-215-5141. The COVID-19 pandemic was making 2020 look as an election year with low turnout. Instead, Americans are turning out in numbers to cast early ballots, weeks before the election day. Experts predicting record-breaking numbers. Voters in North Carolina fight the rain and tell CNBC why they came out early. I remember a time when you couldn't vote early. So this is a, uh, one of the... Finest hour, you can do it. Get in there, 
cast your vote? Wow. For me, there's just something about coming in person and voting. Um, as long as I'm physically able, I want to be able to do that and just to really experience other people that are out here voting also. Dr. Fauci on 60 Minutes says the country is fatigued with lockdown. Dr. Anthony Fauci in an upcoming episode of 60 Minutes says the coronavirus Dr. pandemic Fauci would have to get Minutes really, really bad before he would lockdown. favor a national USA lockdown. Radio the News country is fatigued with restrictions. So we want to use public health measures not to get in the way of opening the economy, but to being a safe gateway to opening the economy. So instead of having an opposition, open up the economy, get jobs back, or shut down. No, put shut down away and say, we're gonna use public health measures to help us safely get to where we wanna go. That interview in its entirety will air Sunday night on 60 Minutes. For USA Radio News, I'm Tim Berg. Hiring can be challenging, but ZipRecruiter makes it fast and easy. We talked to Monica Starks, who needed to hire for a pivotal role at her company, GS Group. As the owner of a construction company, finding the right people is a very difficult task. So I use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology identifies the right people for your job and actively invites them to apply, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Monica did, and that's how she found Lamont, her new project superintendent. The job is so perfect for me. I had a career breakthrough. I would have never found this job if it wasn't for ZipRecruiter. With ZipRecruiter, we've hired everyone from accountants to project managers to field scientists. With ZipRecruiter, we get hiring results. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. We are living in difficult times where people fear having thought-provoking conversations about pressing issues. And although we're in the midst of an information explosion, there are a lot of forces aiming to distort what's true. I created The Bill Walton Show to provide a forum for in-depth, thought-provoking conversations with leaders, artists, entrepreneurs, and thinkers. Please join me at thebillwaltonshow.com to explore what's true, what's right, and what's next. time the uh, well it would normally be seven past the hour i guess you got that going for you it's early in the hour so there's lots to cover in this hour of good day health with dr jack stockwell who along with his wife runs a fabulous clinic in uh, salt lake city utah his fabulous website is forbiddendoctor.com he's a board certified nuka chiropractor uh, he's a gaps practitioner you name it he does it he sells popcorn at the circus he's uh, you know he's got it all going for for him and one of the <laughs> one of the most controversial things and I don't know more response to this I get a kick out of this last week we were talking and it shows up on the podcast at gooddayhealthshow.com the discussion of why to drink coffee after breakfast mm -hmm. remember we had that we the study that claimed you ought to drink coffee after breakfast not before or during yes and people said why uh, I said, well, if you listen to the podcast, he explains why. No, he doesn't. He just says it's not good to do. He doesn't say why. Now, I remember, I don't remember the exact verbology here, but I thought I remembered you saying why you shouldn't drink coffee before you have your uh, breakfast or before you have food in your stomach. Um, but I'm going to leave that to you to sort of underscore it, and then we'll move on. But this was what well, people, there's such addiction to coffee. You don't no, drink don't. it. Wife doesn't drink it. I don't drink it. But, man, we are certainly in the minority. Otherwise, Dunkin' Donuts and Pumpkin Dunkin' or whatever wouldn't exist, and neither would Starbucks, and neither would all the other places, Ma and Pa kettle joints that serve coffee. Everybody, when you go into a restaurant in the morning, don't they all say the same thing to you? 
Want well, a cup of coffee? Up to you, they walk up with a cup of coffee in their hands. Yeah, Assuming right, exactly. That that's one of the reasons what why you are. you're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, you know, it. Why do Why do people drink it? Uh, number one, it's a habit, and number right, two, because of the caffeine. And caffeine mm-hmm. is a stimulant, but it doesn't just stimulate the brain to wake you up and get you going. It stimulates all. Uh, caffeine stimulates almost every system inside of the body, and one of the things you don't want stimulated before it's naturally is that stimulated. A word? by eating food, yes, is the digestive system. And you don't want the digestive system getting ahead of itself. Yeah. And it will ca- it causes a sympathetic reaction inside of the body, and a sympathetic reaction slows down digestion. And so you end up with a chemical hormonal effect from drinking caffeine early in the morning before you eat anything that will affect the digestion of your food. Mm. So you don't want the cascade of digestion, the eating. As soon as you smell food, digestion begins. And then really? when you chew it, yes, the ga- acids are being released. Uh, there's a, um, several hormones that are involved for you to handle protein, fat, and carbohydrate that are being released, getting ready. You know, here it comes. Get ready, everybody. Here comes the food. And if you've had caffeine or uh, any kind of organic, uh, black, green tea, ca- coffee, whatever else, ahead of time, these things are stimulated in such a way that it slows down the process. Stimulation doesn't just mean gearing something up. Stimulation can also have an anti-gearing up effect. And when you are in a fight, flight, or f- fight or flight, which uh, caffeine stimulation can create because of a of a um, sympathetic nervous system stimulation it gets it gets uh, blood to the heart i mean to the lungs to the brain to the muscles and it slows down blood flow to the digestive system now you know it's one thing to see a rabid dog at your front door and then you run for your life it's another thing on a much much lower level to have that kind of a stimulation take place but it has the same effect suppression of digestion and so or you don't let would, the dog into your house. That could yeah, well, yeah, insane. but for that momentary shock when you <laughs> slam the door shut, yeah, right. you know that the hair goes up on the back of your neck, you get all goose pimply, your heart starts racing. Yeah, well, hearts start racing when you drink caffeine because mm-hmm. it's a stimulant in that particular sense. But now are you saying that tea does the same? Because I don't mind Black a little tea. cup of tea. Black tea, know, green tea. Uh, okay, but I have a sponsor. Uh, uh, the you know, Life uh, tea is different than that other stuff. It's not either black or brown or gray or green. It's well, just... there are non-caffeine teas. Mm. So, okay. uh, you know, it'll say caffeine-free. If it doesn't say caffeine-free, then you know it has caffeine in it. But a lot of teas, yeah. we have a mess of herbal teas here in the house right now that we drink. And it'll yeah. say on the front, caffeine-free. Yeah. All right. But so all there's... teas... Go ahead. All... All tea starts out as green. Even the black India tea starts out as green, and then they they roast it. They dry it out, and they roast it, and that's how you end up with black tea, but it started out as green. And so the big matcha, big promotion right now, you know, the faddish thing out there in the tea market of green tea is just tea leaves that are in their original state that haven't been treated yet. Hmm. All right. Well, there you have it. More than you probably thought you were going to get when it comes to continually understanding the drinking of coffee, what it does to your system. See, this is the kind of thing that people love, if I do say so myself. When you're on and you go, sometimes you drive me crazy because you get into the weeds, and I don't even understand what the hell you're talking about. That's my middle name. I know. I understand that, and that's why (laughs) Mary loves you. But when it comes to stuff like that, so helpful because it's something that everybody does, and I'm betting... Most of the people who just heard you explain that haven't got a clue as to why. It's a habit. You just said it. That's it. It's a habit. And you don't need to drink the coffee. You come to, you, you think know, you're relying on it, but you let don't, me give I don't you an need example. a cup of coffee to be all excited and worked up in the morning. I get up at 4 o'clock every morning, and I never had a cup of coffee in my life. Anyway, go ahead. Excuse me. Well, no, you can, if you get enough sleep the night before, you can. I don't get enough sleep. That's easy to do. That's an easy thing to do. But, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they go out to dinner in the evening, 
They may have a cocktail or a glass of wine or something like that before their meal or with their meal. But a lot right. of people, once the meal's over, will sit there and enjoy a nicely brewed cup of coffee before they leave. They had the coffee right. at the end of the yeah, meal. Yeah, yeah. Well, they do. We at don't the think end, about they that say, in the morning. In the, instead of dessert, you want a cup of coffee? Or yeah, you want exactly. a cup of coffee and a piece of pie? You know, that kind of stuff. Just and leave it at the coffee. Leave the, the waitress <laughs> comes to the uh, table. I went to the to a restaurant the other night, and uh, one of the strange things, you know, they have 90 minutes now. You come in, and you can stay 90 minutes, and then you got to get out. Uh, and at the end, because we were chatting, uh, she, the lady said, sorry, you don't have time for, <laughs> for coffee or dessert. Get and I looked at her and I said, well, fortunately for you and us, we don't want coffee or dessert. Uh, but oh. it's, it, you know, it is, um, it's really pretty amazing how we get stuck on that. So I'm betting that'll make it into the podcast next week. Uh, but the coffee discussion started in the last week's uh, podcast. Find them at gooddayhealthshow.com. In a moment, I want to talk about what Jack has at ForbiddenDoctor.com for his podcast and some of the other things that are being focused upon, if you will. Good day, health. Doug Steffen here with Dr. Jack Stockwell. Take care of your brain. Jack will be the first to tell you how important vitamin D is for your brain. And Prevagen has a very large supply. As a dietary supplement, Prevagen's number one when it comes to helping you have a healthier brain. So if you will do yourself the favor, I'm just reminding you as you're taking care of your body, take care of your brain. That noggin is so precious you got nothing if you don't have a brain. Add to your routine the proven brain health supplement Prevagen. It's part of my daily routine. Make it part of yours. Prevagen, P-R-E-V-A-G-E-N for a healthier brain and a much better life. Have you gained the quarantine 15? Or maybe it's 20, 30, or even more by now. Well, you can get your weight back on track by using Calitrin. Just listen to what everyone is saying. My name is Jessica. I'm from the state of Texas, and I've been taking Calitrin. I take it um, both for weight loss and for the health benefits. I have lost 50 pounds, and I take it every night to help me sleep, and I feel I'm better rested in the morning after I've taken it. My name is John. I am from Lafayette, Louisiana, and I have lost 59 pounds on Calitrin. Hi, this is Beth from Texas, and I've been using Calitrin and found that it has improved my life immeasurably. I use it for arthritis pain. The pain is gone. I am able to get up in the morning and move around without any discomfort. Calitrin is drug-free, stimulant-free, and has a huge 86% success rate with 90 days. Check out Calitrin's big sale at toploss.com. That's toploss.com. Hiring can be challenging, but ZipRecruiter makes it fast and easy. We talked to Monica Starks, who needed to hire for a pivotal role at her company, GS Group. As the owner of a construction company, finding the right people is a very difficult task. So I use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology identifies the right people for your job and actively invites them to apply, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Monica did, and that's how she found Lamont, her new project superintendent. The job is so perfect for me. I had a career breakthrough. I would have never found this job if it wasn't for ZipRecruiter. Recruiter. With ZipRecruiter, we've hired everyone from accountants to project managers to field scientists. With ZipRecruiter, we get hiring results. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Back with Dr. Jack Stockwell on Good Day Health. I'm Doug Steffen. One of the great things that Jack offers, I talk about his website all the time, Forbidden Doctor, because there's always great podcasts. There are a couple of hundred of them there, pretty much covering every medical issue you could come up with. One of the other things that you find at Forbidden Doctor is Jack's the uh, symptom survey. Jack has put this together, and now he's got new people on his staff because this has become very, very promotionally positive. Uh, yes. So if you want to get more out of life, figure out what's going on in your body, that's really what your website says to do, Jack. Well, it is, and it's a very cost-effective uh, way to find out a better understanding of what's going on inside of you. I mean, we know nutrition. You hear that, you know, you've heard that from years from me on this radio show. Yeah. There's no obligation to buy anything, uh, but you just you click on Symptom Survey on the home page, 
and uh, you complete it. As you well know, it takes a little while to do that because there's so many questions. And then on the final page of the survey, you sign up for the member account that's there, and you're going to get an email back with your link with a password, and you want to be sure to check your email for that message. And uh, it, your personalized protocol won't be ready right away because uh, one of us, especially a nutritional counselor that we work with here, will analyze the confidential survey information. They'll run it by Mary. They'll run it by me to make sure that we can put together a constant How do you have time? custom. How do you have time? Well, because as that? I run from one treatment room to the next, they will bring me the, the handout, the sheet, and said, here's what they said. Here's their complaint. Here's their major complaints. Uh, this is what I think needs to be done, and I may add to it. I may change something. But f for the most part, you know, they, we've worked together long enough now. They know how I think. They know how Mary thinks. And they've learned an awful lot themselves. And it's completely HIPAA secure, completely confidential. And, uh, and then you will receive back what we suggest you might consider as a protocol to address your problems, whether it's with the heart or the brain or the lungs or the digestive system, reproductive system, the skin, whatever else is your major issue. We'll have some suggestions for you, and it's free up to that point. And if you want to go further, we'll give you a free 30-minute consultation on why we came up with the suggestions and the answers that we did to your survey. Yeah. All right. So this is important stuff. You really need to. I say this all the time. I don't want to sound like a, you know, beating a dead horse, but it's not beating a dead horse. You'll be the dead horse if you don't pay attention to what's going on in your body. You need to know what's going on. It's your responsibility. All Jack's trying to do is help you out. So when you uh, look at the all the information, uh, it's HIPAA. You know, I, I get, wave my HIPAA rights when I'm talking to Jack and to Ken because I don't mind you hearing stories about what I'm going through and what the doctors say. As a matter of fact, when we continue, I want to tell you about my latest visit, uh, my latest physical in my ever in my never ending quest <laughs> to find out what's going on in this body. As that uh, is a focus, and I think, I, again, I, I try to act as a guinea pig a little bit to tell you stories, and hopefully it's helpful. All of this is hopefully helpful. That's why we do it every week. It's Good Day Health. Dr. Jack Stockwell in this hour. Progressive Motorcycle presents Road Wisdom from the Motor. Progressive Motorcycle also presents Roadside Assistance. Progressive Motorcycle, for those who were born to ride. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. You may meet in an office or on a video chat. Your commute might now be measured in feet, not miles. How you do business may have changed, but Staples will always have everything you need, like ink and toner, webcams, and networking accessories. Right now, earn 40% back in rewards when you buy any two ink or toner cartridges. Shop in-store, online, or pick up curbside. And save big at Staples. Ends 1017. While supplies last, exclusions apply. For details, visit staples.com slash 40 in rewards. Curbside available in most stores. Our most vulnerable veterans are isolated at hospitals. And during their greatest time of need, their loved ones can have little or no contact with them. Imagine having to shelter in place forever. Learn how you can help at HealVets.org. Help Heal Veterans with the support of citizens like you is making things better together. Learn more at HealVets.org. This message is furnished by Help Heal Veterans, a not-for-profit organization. Cancer is the number one cause of death by disease for children in the U.S. today. Since the Austin Hatcher Foundation's birth in 2006, it has grown to provide unique programs to help the children and the families affected by pediatric cancer. Support begins at the time of diagnosis and continues throughout survivorship at no cost to families. Lives touched by the foundation continue to rise each day. But we need your help. Donate, volunteer, or partner with the Austin Hatcher Foundation. Learn how you can get involved. Visit HatcherFoundation.org for more information. Moving back into the fold here, into uh, the uh, era 
of really because of COVID, we got to know what's going on in our body. Some people are becoming aware of it more so. Would you? I guess maybe that's a question for you, Jack, as the professional here. Do you think that people who are coming to visit you are more aware? Are they thinking more about better health? Are they afraid? What do you think is the tone and the tenor of the average person that comes to your clinic these days? I, I, I see one of two different kinds of people. Those who want me to answer their lives and make their life safe for them. Right. And those that have stepped forward and actually started researching how their bodies work. There's tremendously good information as well as crazy out there on the Internet. And you and you can do specific searches. How does the pancreas work? How does the ovary work? How do the eyeballs work? And you can get some great information. And if you couple that with natural uh, whole food support, you can come up. And, and those are the people who actually, those are the people who ask me the most questions are those who actually spend some time researching. And interestingly enough, these same people are researching politics. They're researching economics. They're researching yeah. social they aspects care. of their lives. Oh, duh. That's, yeah, they're aware enough to care. And then there's the other group of people, as I said, who want me to make the world safe for them and to answer their every last little question. And these are, these are people could be in their 60s and 70s who I'll bet if you went home, you wouldn't find three books in their house. No, no offense. I'm just trying to answer oh, no. your question as best I can. No offense taken. Of course not. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, but no, I, no, I don't mean you. I no, mean, no, I you didn't, know, I no didn't, offense I know to the audience. Mean, me, because yeah. I do pay attention to what's going on in my body. And I don't know where that comes from. My mother didn't pay attention to her body. She was dead at 50. My father... Yeah thought he was, I don't think he thought about it. He just kind of was athletic and he was always in shape and he was very vigorous and, and, you know, he's pretty careful about it. I never really saw my father. He got a little paunchy after my mother died uh, and he started having fibrillations about the same time. And that may for a while have, I don't know if the two went together or not, but he lost the weight as he got older. He was quite trim. And uh, as Jack says many times, you probably agree with this. I mean, as uh, Ken says, uh, you never have seen anybody in 90 who is obese. You don't live to be old if you don't take care of your weight. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah, I, I have some patients in their 80s who are overweight, but I don't have anybody in their 90s that are yeah. anything but thin. Yeah, right. Exactly. So does that happen just because that's what happens to your body or people have to work at it? I'm wondering sometimes whether it just happens naturally. You lose your you, your body stays trim because you know it I wants need to, to send you I need to send you a video that someone had sent me the other day and it's a color remake of a 1901 film that was taken on the streets of London and as and I think it's outside of a manufacturing plant because there's all these workers walking around and they're similarly dressed and Mary was pointing out to me when we were watching it's about four minutes long I'll send it to you. And there was not one person among at least 100 to 150 that you would ever consider overweight. Mm -hmm. Now you go to the mall, you know, go anywhere, go to the theater, anywhere else, and see if that's still the case. No, it isn't. And that's why we have this explosion now of degenerative conditions in our bodies affecting the, how the brain works, how the heart works, how the pancreas, the lungs, the digestive system, because we are so burdened because of the fact that we simply just overeat and usually overeat the wrong stuff. I was at an auction, a farm auction this past weekend, and I, I, I just, I, I'm aghast at how overweight, big, heavy uh, these people are, and they smoke, and and they don't yeah. wear a mask, and you know any number of things. It just really but there's a pill for that. It's yeah, right, yeah. It was an operation for that. Uh, however, it's pretty unpleasant, as I'm sure the people will tell you who've been through it. Coming up next, as we go into the next half hour, a focus on breast cancer with Dr. Jack Stockwell. I'm Doug Steffen. This is Good Day Health. Calitone is collagen. We're born with collagen. We lose it. You're putting back into your body what your body has naturally. There are no drugs. There are no stimulants. And what it does, it supports the lean muscle. It burns your stored fat. 
you're going to more than likely see inch loss before weight loss. That doesn't happen fast. Also, if you have anything joint-wise, muscle-wise, it's going to go there first. You know, uh, your body breaks down the, the collagen protein, and one of those proteins is glycine, which helps your body sleep more soundly. So there's many, many benefits, but it's one of your few that your heart patients, your diabetics, if you're on prescription meds, it will not interact at all. There's a 45-day money-back guarantee. Use the code DJV for free shipping and to get these Zabogo deals. It's a great way to lose weight, the healthiest way to do it in America. Check it all out at toploss.com. It's important to think about your brain health as you get older. If you're experiencing a lack of sharpness or mild problems with recall, Prevagen can help. In a clinical trial, a subgroup of adults with mild, age-related cognitive impairment taking only one Prevagen a day were shown to improve in measures related to memory. Keep your brain top of mind. Prevagen. Healthier brain, better life. Statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to treat, cure, or prevent any disease. We are living in difficult times where people fear having thought-provoking conversations about pressing issues. And although we're in the midst of an information explosion, there are a lot of forces aiming to distort what's true. I created The Bill Walton Show to provide a forum for in-depth, thought-provoking conversations with leaders, artists, entrepreneurs, and thinkers. Please join me at TheBillWaltonShow.com to explore what's true, what's right, and what's next. Radio News with Lance Pry. Philip Anderson, the organizer of an event to protest Twitter censorship, posted photos to Twitter of his bloody mouth with the front tooth missing and another hanging loosely. He said Antifa protesters attacked him for no reason. Anderson took the stage about 1 o'clock in the afternoon in San Francisco Saturday and was greeted by chants and bottles thrown over police barricades. The San Francisco Police Department said three officers suffered non-life-threatening injuries when they were assaulted with pepper spray. One officer was taken to a local hospital for treatment. No arrests were made, the department said. Ahead of Thursday's presidential debate, President Trump calls the moderator, NBC's Kristen Welker, terrible and unfair. The president goes on to say he's just like most fake news reporters, but I'll still play the game. The people know, how's Steve Scully doing? Trump tweeted along with a retweet from son Donald Trump Jr., reminding followers Welker and her family are prominent Democrats. USA Radio News. Warning, if you are over the age of 65 and on Medicare Parts A and B, you must listen to this. Studies show that the average Medicare recipient pays more than $5,000 in out-of-pocket medical expenses each year. What is even worse is that sudden health emergencies can cost $75,000 or more and force thousands of unfortunate Americans into extreme debt and even bankruptcy. There is hope. The solution is SnapMedicare.com. All it takes is a quick phone call to 800-286-5516 to protect yourself and your finances. Call 800-286-5516 to make sure your Medicare plan includes provisions to cover any gap in your coverage. Whether you have questions about Part A or Part B Medicare, remember and rest easy knowing that your medical expenses are being taken care of with SnapMedicare.com. Call 800-286-5516. You and your loved ones deserve peace of mind, and SnapMedicare.com will help you get it. Call 800-286-5516. That's 800-286-5516. This report is brought to you by Eli Lilly and Company. Raise your hand if you use Lilly Insulin and struggle to afford your monthly prescription and are enrolled in Medicare Part D, have a high deductible insurance plan, or don't have health insurance at all. If your hand is raised, Lilly wants to help. Lilly has solutions that can help make life easier for you. Lilly launched Insulin Affordability. Learn, act, share. To encourage people using Lilly Insulin to learn about their affordability options, to act by calling the Lilly Diabetes Solution Center and to share this important information with others. People with or without commercial insurance can buy Lilly Insulins today for $35 per monthly prescription at a retail pharmacy. And this fall, seniors can enroll in Medicare Part D plans that provide a $35 copay starting in January. Raise your hand and visit InsulinAffordability.com or call 1-833-808-1234 Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Do you think all vitamin C's are the same? They're not. 
Ester C is a superior form of vitamin C. It's the only vitamin C with 24-hour immune support. And it lasts up to two times longer than regular vitamin C. So don't just settle for any vitamin C. Buy Ester C and support your immune health today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Brembo has been stopping champions on the track as well as drivers like you and me on the street for over 50 years. Whether it's UV-coated brake discs, low-dust premium ceramic brake pads, or high-temperature brake fluid, BremboStoreUSA.com is the place to go to buy genuine Brembo OE-equivalent replacement brake components. Go to BremboStoreUSA.com to help you achieve that 60-0 to zero braking performance you deserve and expect from Brembo. Brembo, the choice of champions and consumers for over 50 years. Dr. Jack Stockwell is here. I uh, am looking at the video at the moment of um, some of the stuff going on on my farm, and I was thinking about my former wife. This is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Week, or month, I guess it is, and uh, I wonder... When it comes to treating cancer, we all know what the conventional world is all about and what is supported by drugs and you know that sort of stuff, the cancer community, cancer business. But when somebody comes to you and they may not know whether they have cancer, they come to your clinic in Salt Lake City and they've got an ache in their back and they want you to fix, adjust whatever it is. Oftentimes, whether you know it or not, breast cancer pain starts in your back so what do you do what do you you're not a diagnostician necessarily but you do know what's going on in somebody's body so how do you how do you deal with that oh i do i actually i do a lot of diagnosis and anytime i see anything that would border even approach that kind of a problem they are immediately referred yeah. All right. So you send them to people who know. Now that doesn't mean I stop taking care of them. I'll continue to take care of them. Yeah. But I will tell them, listen, I want you to go do this. Now, interestingly enough, some of them say, no, no, I'm going to stay here. And I say, well, you know, you're you're you can you're do that. having a problem that's outside of my scope of practice. Right. Exactly. And so and it may well be something that you need to give some more attention to or at least go get a consultation. Well, wow. so, that's the, yeah. I mean, I think that's it. But do you have? I think it depends on the region that you're in as to what kind of care you can get. You agree with that? I mean, what Salt Lake City isn't known as a big medical facility, big medical capital, is it? Oh yes, there's no big. What, well, what's between there? between Denver and Sa- and San Francisco? Uh, we're it. In, in, well, if you go south, you won't find anything till you get down to Phoenix, and there's nothing north of us. Mm-hmm. So yes, the Intermountain Healthcare System, as well as other hospital systems, uh, are are um, focused on the uh, University of Utah Health Center, which is uh, very well established as far as talent concerns and expertise, because it's about the only thing in a thousand mile stretch from Denver to San Francisco. Really. All right, there is uh, continuing. I know you'll enjoy this because you uh, are happy to go along with anything that seems to point out the foibles of the people who are, quote unquote, in charge when it comes to handling COVID. Uh, It seems to me two, three months ago, didn't we talk about a study that said the virus didn't last on uh, stainless steel, for example, or other flat surfaces. At the beginning, mm-hmm. it was the virus lasts for a month on all of these surfaces. And then two or three months later, uh, oh, no, we made a mistake. That's not true. Well, you'll be happy to know that a study being published this week in the Virology Journal says, well, oh, COVID is all over the place. Glass, money, <laughs> on top of stainless steel. Absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, so who the hell knows what to believe? Well, we've done we've done some podcasts on this. Yeah. In in the air you're breathing, and this comes from virology research as well. There are ten to the thirty first power of uh, viruses in the atmosphere of this planet 
There's 10 to the 31st. You know how big a number is 10 with 31 zeros after it? That's about the distance between here and uh, the nearest planet that looks like Earth. Yeah. In terms of no, miles. Yeah. It's there. It is more than the stars of the known universe. Mm-hmm. And we know that there are hundreds of millions of galaxies out there now. Yep. And it's more than all the stars that they contain. You can't escape a virus. We keep thinking of viruses and bacteria as being the bad guy. Yeah. There are a lot of these things that are very beneficial to our life. Even in a newborn baby, and we've always assumed that a baby's digestive system was sterile before it came out of the amniotic fluid at birth. Now they have found in just uh, uh, the first week to 10 days of a baby's life, ha- it has 10 to the 8th power of va- uh, viruses in its gut, and it's perfectly healthy. So, you know, it, 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 it's whatever sells advertising. That, that's what I when I hear announcements like this being made because it's flip flopping, the who flip flops, the CDC flip flops and the latest information that comes out. Who stands to gain from what's being said? Because these things aren't always as scientific as we we want to believe that they are to take away our own concerns and our own fears. And um, when it comes to the fact that these virus, you can't escape them, you're walking through an ocean of microbes that are so small, they're absolutely invisible to the naked yeah. eye. Yeah. And, but, and so we kind of dismiss their existence as being real at all because we simply cannot see them. Yeah. And something I've used before to try to give a good idea as to how small a virus is, Viruses are down to the level of one micron. They can be that small, one micron. What's that mean? That means if you took everybody on the face of this planet and reduced them to the size of one micron and lined them up, that line would be three and a half inches long. That's how small a virus is. Mm-hmm. And they are they're floating, they're swimming, they land. You can sit there and sterilize a tabletop in a matter of minutes. It's covered with viruses all over uh, again. Exactly. So you, it's, you're playing a fool's game. All right. Yeah. Now, with that in mind, before we talk about me and my experience with the doctor here, uh, one other thing about uh, whether this is a fool's errand or not. I know you're not going to get the, the uh, vaccine. A lot of people are uh, lining up for their vaccine. Yeah. And so I see that there is... Is um, uh, according to Dr. Fauci, there is chaos and confusion because of the different bits and pieces of information. Much like what we were just saying, uh, from whatever source the virus sticks, it doesn't stick. Okay, so we're going to have a vaccine. Yeah. We're not going to have a vaccine. Take you care of yourself. You won't need it. Go ahead, Johnson. Steve. I'm sorry. You, you, the announcement from Johnson and Johnson this morning. Yeah, they backed off on their studies because people are getting sick from the vaccine. Yeah. Right. So I, when I went to the uh, doctor, um, he went through several protocols with me. And I want to, uh, I, I, this is a guy that gives me a physical every year or so. And it's a conventional, he sort of blends uh, stuff. He was never in charge, or never in favor of vaccines before, but he is now, and I'll tell you why as we continue here. This Good Day Health, don't forget to get podcast at uh, gooddayhealthshow.com and Dr. Jack's podcast with his wife at forbiddendoctor.com, their fabulous website, forbiddendoctor.com. Here's a word to the wise about losing weight. Uh, this is something that I support and have supported, not just because I get paid, because that's cool, but I will only talk about things that I take and use myself, and I will only take and use natural homeopathic material. And that's really the cool part about Calitrin, which has become America's number one way to lose weight and keep it off. Non-toxic Nothing bad. Now there are a lot of complimentary things that you can find at toploss.com that go along with Calitrin to help you lose the weight, help you lose the maybe little bulge you got around your center, about your midriff. A lot of women are using that. Calitrin's main ingredient is collagen protein, and that's the main ingredient in some of the other things, the bulk buster or whatever they call it. I forgot what they call it. You can find it at their website, toploss.com. Look for the ancillary products that help you when it comes to the weight loss process. Calitrin, take four capsules at night, 
by, by the way, there are a lot of benefits to taking it besides losing weight. And one of the reasons I like it is because it makes me sleep. I have never really had a, a lot of trouble sleeping, but, you know, it's got a lot of things on your mind. This just kind of relaxes you. It's kind of meditative in a manner of speaking, how you feel after you take it. All kinds of information from A to Z at the website. And you can have a private session uh, with the Q&A person at toplaws.com to answer your specific question about how to use this. So you got to help galore. The idea is to get you there, and then you go from there. That's my job, to get you to toplaws.com. When you check out, use our discount code DJV, so you don't have to pay any shipping charges, and you'll be able to get the best bargains, the best prices on having Calitrin shipped to you. Number one, when it comes to healthy weight loss, that's Calitrin at toploss.com. You may meet in an office or on a video chat. Your commute might now be measured in feet, not miles. How you do business may have changed, but Staples will always have everything you need, like ink and toner, webcams, and networking accessories. Right now, earn 40% back in rewards when you buy any two ink or toner cartridges. Shop in-store, online, or pick up curbside. And save big. Staples. Ends 1017. While supplies last, exclusions apply. For details, visit staples.com slash 40 in rewards. Curbside available in most stores. Do you think all vitamin C's are the same? They're not. Ester C is a superior form of vitamin C. It's the only vitamin C with 24-hour immune support. And it lasts up to two times longer than regular vitamin C. So don't just settle for any vitamin C. Buy Ester C and support your immune health today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Freedom doesn't start in the White House. It starts in your house. Here's Helen Kriebel. State legislators in one western state were trying to pass a controversial bill and hoped to do it quickly before opponents had a chance to generate opposition. Opponents found out and asked that the bill be read on the Senate floor, a right members have in every state. So the leadership brought in five computers to simultaneously read different parts of the bill at 650 words a minute each, a speed no human can follow and comprehend. A district judge finally intervened and ordered the state Senate president to have the bill read in an intelligible fashion. Such shenanigans are common in legislatures across the country, but the principle they violate just isn't that complicated. The people have a right to know what their government is doing and playing kindergarten games does not fill the bill. For more information, check out our podcast at lensofliberty.org. All right, back with Dr. Jack here on the uh, Good Day Health platform at gooddayhealthshow.com. So anyway, I went to uh, have a physical. The doctor, after I had the TIA, said, well, you probably haven't had a physical. Well, I actually have, but not with him. So I said, come in and let me go through you. Uh, with you uh, head to toe, yada, yada. Pretty conventional stuff, weight, law, you know, what's your blood pressure? Mine is 110, pretty consistent. It was yesterday 110 over 72, uh, but it usually is in that. And so I asked a question. Remember, I don't know if I said this to you. I said it to, to Ken about taking uh, the uh, the Plavix, which is supposed to thin your blood. Well, if you have low blood pressure, will it make you lightheaded? Ken said no. Uh, so, but I noticed I've been, I sort of have, uh, and he didn't like this either. I've been my own doctor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I cut everything in half. So now I'm taking the statin in half and it seems to agree with me. Doesn't, I have no negative uh, side effects, little lightheadedness once in a while, but not a lot like I did when I first got started. And the cramps aren't as much of a problem if I only take a little dose. And the same with the Plavix, which is supposed to be a blood thinner. What's bothering me is every time I get a cut on the farm, I bleed more than I used to, but that's supposed to be good. Right. And I was also told yesterday by the doctor I could give blood, which I really am happy about. So uh, anyway, uh, that's he we went through the pneumonia shot. Have you ever had a, a pneumonia shot? Flu shots? No. no, I know. But what about no. the pneumonia shot? No, I haven't had any shots since I was a child. Really? Yeah. Other than from your first wife. Maybe that's a different story for a different day. That, that's supposed to be funny, Jack. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, crack, you really cracked me up. Yeah, I'm that. sure I did. No, yes, other right. than the three that I got when I was very, very young, I have not had a shot since. Mm -hmm. No. And 
did it leave a scar? Sometimes they leave. Oh scar yeah, mentally, the little scratchy, the, the little smallpox thing. They yeah, do there they're always these itchy. Yeah, too- Why they? I, I'm just scratching mine now. As I was thinking about it. Why are those where you had them when you were like two, three years old? Why are they always itchy? Well, because your body recognizes immediately that it does not belong there. Yeah, but this is a lot of times it will encapsulate. Seventy years ago. Well, uh, some people's bodies will get rid of that stuff over time. It encapsulates it and and gets it into the the, either the urine or the colon to get rid of it. Some of that stuff gets encapsulated and it doesn't move and it stays there. And occasionally it'll irritate a a local nerve fiber, Mm. and that will cause some itching that's going on. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, it's pretty well encapsulated. I mean, what it was designed to do, its effect was over in a matter of a few weeks when really? we were children. But part of, chemical, part of the chemical, part of the no, no, I mean, in the, it's supposed to create antibodies. All that activity mm-hmm. takes place in the first two to three weeks. However, some of the material, and who knows what was in the ones that we got back then, especially the Simeon 40, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of scary in the way of cancer. But the body, the body, if it can't immediately get rid of something, it will wall it off. If it knows it doesn't belong there, it will create a wall around it. It will encapsulate it in a fat protein structure to isolate it from the rest of the body because it knows it doesn't belong there. Yeah. All right. Don't forget at uh, ForbiddenDoctor.com, the long life energy enzyme. Sometimes they refer to them as the Lees, uh, the most powerful, as Jack suggested, all natural way. Uh, this is something that is great for your pancreas. It's uh, great for digestion, all kinds of problems that your body has you may not even know about, but why not take it to be safe? You'll find that at ForbiddenDoctor.com. And don't forget all of our conversation about the uh, symptom survey. At your service and certainly on your side, that's Dr. Jack Stockwell in his clinic in Salt Lake City. Probably snowing there already because it snows a lot there. Uh, a little early in the season for the rest of us, but anyway. Dr. Jack at ForbiddenDoctor.com. Doug Steffen at GoodDayHealthShow.com. During the 1980 presidential campaign, Ronald Reagan struck the killing blow to President Jimmy Carter's chances for re-election by asking one simple question. Are you better off than you were four years ago? A recent Gallup poll asked voters the same question. I'm Jeff Charles, sociopolitical correspondent with LibertyNation.com. According to the poll, 56% of voters said they were better off than they were before President Trump took office. This percentage is higher than when the same poll was conducted during President George W. Bush and Barack Obama's administrations. When Reagan asked this question, the answer was a resounding no, as evidenced by his solid victory over Jimmy Carter. But in 2020, the answer seems to be yes. But what does this predict about the 2020 election? If American voters believe that Trump contributed to their improved circumstances, then it could mean that they will support the president regardless of the polls. Either way, it is clear that Reagan's question is every bit as relevant today as it was in 1980. Learn more at LibertyNation.com. Conservative news where truth matters. Jay Farner here, CEO of Rocket Mortgage. Making the right financial decisions has never been more important. When you turn to Rocket Mortgage, we can help guide you to those right decisions now when they matter most. Mortgage rates are near historic lows, so now is a great time to call 8338-ROCKET. And if you need some extra money, a cash-out refinance could give you that financial boost you're looking for. Call today at 8338-ROCKET or go to rocketmortgage.com to learn more. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. And MLS number 3030. Now there's a natural way to take charge of your blood pressure. Introducing new Garlic Healthy Blood Pressure Formula from the makers of the nation's best-selling garlic supplement. New Garlic helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels with clinically supported levels of garlic, plus a custom blend of vitamins and minerals. And it's odor-free. Take charge of your blood pressure with new Garlic Healthy Blood Pressure Formula. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The term natural reference is only the garlic in the product. Use as directed. Progressive Motorcycle presents Road Wisdom from the Motor. Half man, half motorcycle. You grab life with both hands. And you grab your bike with both hands. Both hands. Therefore, bike is life. Progressive Motorcycle also presents Roadside Assistance. Progressive Motorcycle, for those who were born to ride. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. You may meet in an office or on a video chat. 
Your commute might now be measured in feet, not miles. How you do business may have changed, but Staples will always have everything you need, like ink and toner, webcams, and networking accessories. Right now, earn 40% back in rewards when you buy any two ink or toner cartridges. Shop in-store, online, or pick up curbside. And save big. Staples. Ends 1017. While supplies last, exclusions apply. For details, visit staples.com slash 40 in rewards. Curbside available in most stores. We are into medicine big time, and we have Big Jack here <laughs> to, to help us through our Amen. big time medical review. You're our big guy. You're a, you're a big, broad-shouldered big guy, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Your okay. okay. wife likes that. I'm happy to tell everybody. All right, enough of that stuff. Let's get to Jack and yet another way to understand what's going on in your body or maybe better put jack why you put certain things into your body in this case the long life energy enzymes that you produce you can get them at forbiddendoctor.com l-e-e they're called lees you put bitter melon so what is bitter Melon. We can all guess, but I'm guessing we'd be wrong. What's well, as melon? we've talked about before, our long life energy enzymes has a two a, a two pronged approach. Number one, to support digestion and to clean out the bloodstream from any all the stuff that builds up in the walls of the bloodstream. The that includes the plaque that absolutely. has bothered me. How come it hasn't gotten rid of all the plaque in my carotids then? Well, you're not taking enough, or really? you had an okay. awful lot of plaque, and it's just going to take forty percent. Uh, the doctor told me last week I didn't have to worry till it got to be 70%. I don't like it at 40%. I don't like no, any because I don't have any of the rest of my body. Well, the body is very selective where it will lay down plaque. Apparently. And the other, the other half of the enzyme approach is to support sugar handling processes in the body or ah. uh, the things that tend towards diabetes. Now, in the Journal of Med Medicinal Food, which is not published inside the United States, I guarantee it, pharmaceutical companies will not allow that, but in the foreign nations, especially in the area of the Orient, um, where they do an awful lot of food research, because obviously that's where our life stems from, is the food choices we have. They've long known that bitter melon is very supportive of the pancreas's ability to lower fat in the bloodstream and to help regulate sugar levels. Hmm. So we made sure we put that in our long life energy enzymes. All right, so what's the recommended? I take a couple in the morning and a couple at night. But it says on the bottle, take four. That's why I take yeah. four, two, and two. Should I take four in the morning and four at night? If so that you've I got can... that much, yes, if you've got that much placking going on in your carotids, I would suggest four in the morning and four at night. Really? Yep. Now I can put that yep. to music. And you four want that... in the morning, four in the <laughs> evening. Yeah. And you want it on an empty stomach. If you have why? food in your stomach, these well, these enzymes are going to help digest the food. If there's no food present for the enzymes to digest, they will get into the bloodstream. We have regular amounts of pancreatic enzymes. That's a good thing. Oh, okay. Because if we took a blood sample of you right now, we would find certain what are considered normal levels of these yeah. enzymes present in the bloodstream because the pancreas is constantly putting them out in the bloodstream. It's one of the ways they're able to tell if it's elevated that you have pancreatic problems. Isn't now, there, what, excuse me for a second, doesn't standard process have something that we could take in addition to the Lee enzymes for your pancreas? Yeah, multi-enzyme. Oh, oh, pancreatrophin, excuse me. Yeah. Yes, it's right, a right. protomorphogen called pancreatrophin. So yeah. if, there, if you are tending towards pancreatic problems, pancreatrophin slows down and stops. How would you know? Kind of autoimmune. If you've got pancreatic problems, how would you detect that in your body? Well, What's the first sign of a pancreatic problem? Anytime you have sugar imbalances, anything that tends towards diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes or insulin sensitivity, you've got some pancreatic problems. Is this the stuff that causes pain, pancreatic cancer? Because that's a it very will tend deadly... To, well, it, it can go in that direction. It doesn't have to. It doesn't yeah. have to. Right. But pancreatic cancer, cancer always started with something like this. 
All right. There's some very important information that you'll want to get. Uh, probably be repeated in the uh, next podcast that we do at uh, GoodDayHealthShow.com. Between working from home, not being able to hit the gym, and staying indoors more often, the lockdown has left a lot of people aching because they're doing less movement. So let's see if we can figure out how to get around that with Andy Solomon. Inactivity can worsen joint pain caused by osteoarthritis, a condition that affects over 30 million U.S. adults. And it's no surprise that more people are complaining of aches and pains since COVID began. Rheumatologist Dr. Daniel J. Wallace explains. When it comes to arthritis pain, simple lifestyle changes can make a big difference. Maintaining a healthy weight is important to decrease stress on your body, especially your joints. Low-impact exercises like walking, gentle yoga, swimming, and even light weightlifting can help decrease pain over time. In addition, Dr. Wallace says there are over-the-counter medications developed specifically to relieve this pain. I recommend my patients use Voltaren Arthritis Pain Gel, a non steroidal anti-inflammatory gel for joint pain due to arthritis. An alternative to pills, Voltaren Gel targets pain directly at the source for powerful pain relief. Talk to your doctor about the right arthritis treatment for you. For more, go to VoltarenGel.com. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. Call 352-433-2320. We help veterans and their families with limited financial assistance, counseling, employment referrals, and a food and clothing bank. You can help in making a huge difference in the veterans' lives we serve by donating food, clothing, household items, or direct financial assistance. All donations are tax deductible. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. 352-433-2320. Thank you for your attention and God bless America. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, there's a staycation right here in town. It's Super 8 Motel Ocala, right down the road on 40, just west of I-75. And they're pet friendly. <coughs> Have truck parking. <coughs> free breakfast. Yum, yum. A swimming pool. A kiddie pool. <coughs> and veterans get 10% off. It's a staycation at Super 8 Ocala. Call today, Super 8 Ocala at 352. 352- The Lutheran Hour, bringing Christ to the nations. In every age, Christian martyrs bear witness to a kingdom that will never pass away, where all the colors bleed into one. Dr. Michael Ziegler asks, what are you looking for? We've all been asked to testify, to give a witness to what it is that we're looking for. Our words and actions, our silence and inaction, our lives send a message to those around us. Whether we're doing it consciously or not, we're always sending messages to the people watching us. This is what I value. This is what I'm looking for. That's today on The Lutheran Hour. Hello, I'm Mark Eicher. Thanks for joining us today in this, our 90th year. Your gifts and prayers help the Lutheran Hour bring Christ to the nations and the nations to the church. Thank you for your faithful support. Now with today's message, here is Dr. Michael Ziegler. I've climbed the highest mountains. I have run through the fields only to be with you. I have run, I have crawled, I have scaled these city walls only to be with you, only to be with you, but I Still haven't found what I'm looking for. I have kissed honey lips, felt the healing fingertips. It burned like fire, this burning desire. I have spoke with the tongues of angels. I have held the hand of the devil. It was warm in the night. I was cold as a stone. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I believe in the kingdom come. Then all the colors will bleed into one, bleed into one. Yes, I'm still running. You broke the bonds. You loose the chains. 
you carried the cross of my shame, of my shame. You know I believe it, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. It's been called an expression of deep spiritual longing. The lyrics from that song from the Irish rock band, U2, supposedly the title was based on lyrics from a Bob Dylan song. Dylan wrote, you'll find out when you reach the top. When you reach the top, you're at the bottom. That's how it goes, right? You think you're at the top? Whatever that means, the top of your game, the top of the charts on top of the world? Have you found what you're looking for? I have found something that I want to share with you. I found it in an ancient book. It's about the happenings of some young people who lived two and a half millennia ago, and it seems like they found what they were looking for because they were willing to give up everything for it. It's in the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And the events occurred in the ancient city of Babylon. Babylon is located in what is now modern-day Iraq. And the ancient city of Babylon was built on the site of that even more ancient city of Babel. You know, the one with the tower that almost reached the top, built by people who still hadn't found what they were looking for. Centuries later, after the tower crumbled, the king who restored the city to its former greatness was a man named Nebuchadnezzar. He was a military general who had become the ruler of a great empire that he led from his capital city, Babylon. People who visited Babylon in Nebuchadnezzar's day marveled at what he had made of it with its hanging gardens and its city walls that were said to be as thick as a tennis court is long and as high as the Statue of Liberty's torch. Babylon was a marvel of the ancient world. And this is where the story of these young people unfolds. It's about three young men who were born in the land of Judea, Jewish men. Their birth names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But they were taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar's army and brought to Babylon to serve him. And there in Babylon, they were given different names. Their birth names had been given to honor the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But they were given Babylonian names to honor the Babylonian gods to show that they belonged to Babylon. So Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah became Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They did well in Babylon. They they even were promoted to prominent positions in the Babylonian government, but that's not what they were looking for. And this is their story. Now, Nebuchadnezzar built a statue nine feet wide and 90 feet high. And he set it up in the niche of the wall of the city in the province of Babylon. Then he summoned all the, the senators, the prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, provincial officials, all of them, to come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the senators, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the statue and they stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, To you, O peoples, nations, men of every language, it is said, when you hear the sound of the horns, the flutes, the harps, the strings, 
the drums and all kinds of music, you will fall down and worship the statue of Gold King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who does not bow down and worship will immediately be thrown into a flaming furnace of fire. So, all the peoples, when they heard the sound of the horns, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the strings, and all kinds of music, peoples of every nation and language, they bowed down and worshipped the statue of gold King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At that time, some Babylonian men came forward to accuse the men from Judea. Your majesty, may you live forever. You yourself have given a decree that anyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the lyre, the strings, the harp, drums, and all kinds of music must bow down and worship the statue of gold that you have set up. And anyone who does not bow down and worship will immediately be thrown into a flaming, fiery furnace. Now, there are some men from Judea whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. Your gods, they do not serve. The statue of gold that you have set up, they do not worship. Then Nebuchadnezzar, filled with rage, summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they stood before him. And he said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? My gods you do not serve, and the statue of gold that I set up you do not worship? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the lyre, the strings, harps, and drums, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to bow down and worship the statue I made, very good. But if you will not, immediately you will be thrown into a blazing, fiery furnace. Then what god will be able to save you from my hand. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the flaming furnace of fire, the God whom we serve is able to save us. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the image of gold that you set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, furious with rage, his expression changed, the image of his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual, and ordered the strongest men of his army to bind up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing, fiery furnace. And so these three men, still wearing their, their robes, their turbans, their trousers, and other clothing, were, were bound up to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And the king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so excessively hot that the men who carried them up were killed by the flames. And so these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was startled, and he stood up, and he said to his advisors, didn't we throw three men into the fire, tied up? And they said, certainly, your majesty. And he said, but I see four men walking around unbound, unharmed, and one of them looks like a son of the gods. 
then Nebuchadnezzar approached the opening of the furnace and he shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come here, come out. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the furnace. And all the royal officials and all the senators, prefects, governors, and royal officials gathered around them. And they saw that, that the fire had no power over their bodies. The hairs of their head were not even singed. The, the, their clothing was not charred. There was not even the smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who, who sent his messenger and saved his servants who trusted in him, and he changed the king's command. They were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve any other god except their own god. Therefore, I, I, I decree that any people of any nation or language who says anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be cut into pieces and their houses turned into piles of rubble because no God is able to save in this way. And Nebuchadnezzar promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. The word of the Lord, Daniel chapter 3. I've never been faced with that kind of choice at least under that kind of pressure to choose between either keeping faith with God or keeping hold of my fleeting, frail, mortal life. Or maybe I have. Maybe all of us have in a smaller, less dramatic, more subtle way. We've all been asked to testify, to give a witness to what it is that we're looking for. Our words and actions, our silence and inaction, our lives send a message to those around us. Whether we're doing it consciously or not, we're always sending messages to the people watching us. This is what I value. This is what I'm looking for. Well, sometimes people don't give a clear witness. Their words say, I value this, but their actions say otherwise. And what do you pay more attention to? To what is said or to what is done? And if what they say doesn't match with what they do and what they do doesn't match with what they say, then what do you say about that witness? They're unreliable. They're not going to help you find what you're looking for. Every one of us is a witness for something or someone. And sometimes you find a truly reliable witness. In the Christian tradition, we call them martyrs. Now, you might have heard that a martyr is someone who gives up their life for the faith. And yes, that's part of it, but it's more about giving a witness. Martyr comes from the Greek word that means witness. And you get a really clear witness when someone is forced to make a choice. You can either stand with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or bow to something else. And the martyr knows, if I choose this mortal life over the God who gives true life, I still won't find what I'm looking for. It'll be warm for a night, but it'll leave me cold as a stone. And the martyr prays, but Lord, if I suffer the loss of all things for you, if I lose myself for you, I will be found in you, to be known by you and loved by you, only to be with you. A Christian shouldn't have it as their goal to die for the faith. We ought not try to make ourselves to become martyrs. But we do need a martyr. We need a witness who can show us what we've all been looking for. We need one who has climbed the mountain, who's run the field, who's scaled the wall and walked in the fire with us. We need Jesus, the Son of God, born in the land of Judea. In the book of Revelation, 
Jesus is called the faithful and the true witness. He is the witness. He's the martyr. The one who will bring you through the fire. Through the fire of the day of judgment. And it will have no power over your body. Not even the smell of it will be on you. And he will bring you into the kingdom where all the colors bleed into one. Jesus is the one that you've been looking for. The song that I shared earlier has been called an expression of spiritual longing. The guitarist of the band said that it's a gospel. In an interview, he said, it might not sound like a gospel, but that's what it is if you listen to the lyric. If you listen to Jesus, the faithful witness, hear him say to you, I broke the bonds. I loosed the chains. I carried the cross of your shame only to be with you. Would you pray to him with me? Lord Jesus, by your death, you have become our witness to bring us to the Father. By your resurrection and your spirit, make us your witnesses to bring others to you, only to be with you. Amen. listening to the Lutheran Hour, celebrating 90 years of bringing Christ to the nations and the nations to the church. For free online resources, archived audio, our mobile app, and more, go to lutheranhour.org. Today's text from the book of Daniel is also the basis for this week's discussion on our podcast, Speaking of Jesus. And here's part of what they said. I had a good customer service experience online the other day, and I wanted to tell people about it because it was so good. We testify, we, we give a witness for things that are important to us. In a specifically Christian sense, we use this word martyr, and, and normally it means uh, someone who died for the faith. But if you know, the, the word martyr is a Greek word that means witness. So why do you think it made sense for people to call those who gave their lives for the faith to call them witnesses, to call them martyrs. Well, everybody could see their faith. They didn't just hear about it or know that they had faith, but they could see it because they just died for it. So like the people around, like, like Paul was saying, I was a person witnessing that this was real because I, I, their faith was real to them. They, they died for it and I saw it. So they're kind of bearing witness to what's the most important thing to them. I think being killed for Christ's sake is always preceded by your witness to him. So if you think about those historic people who were martyred um, in the more widely understood sense, it was always that they were being told to give a witness to their faith in Christ, or they were being told to do something that they refused to do because they had faith in the one true God, and that that's, that was what was then causing the problems with the authorities at that time. What else? Why do you think it made sense to, to make that the word that we use for people who, who gave up their lives for their confession of Christ? It's kind of a make it or break it moment in my mind. It forces you to testify, to say, yes, I believe in this thing so much that, yeah, go ahead and throw me in a furnace. Then you have to say, give reason, give a testimony as to why you believe. And that action becomes a, a witness, like Jessica was saying, that it certifies it in some sense. We've been listening to the book of Daniel, and we're in chapter three now. And it's a well-known story, probably one of the best-known stories in the, in the Bible, I'd say. What do you get to know more deeply about this God revealed, witness to in this chapter? I said that God is able to protect his servants from persecution and death, if it is his will. I mean, in this case, he does. 
and they testify to that, that they're not going to bow down to these false gods. Um, they're going to continue to serve the true God, even if it costs them their life. But they testify that God is able to protect them, and he does in this case in a miraculous way. That's what's so shocking to Nebuchadnezzar, because even the guys who walked them up there to the edge of the furnace died because it was so hot, and yet these guys are in the fire, and they're not singed at all. They don't smell like it. And we know from the biblical accounts and acts like Stephen, James, there were people who were allowed to die in their testimony to the Lord. And throughout Christian history, the last 2,000 years, the same. We know of many who have been martyred for their faith. So sometimes it, it is in God's plan to allow people to die giving a witness. Um, but there are other cases where he can use miracles to preserve their lives as well. In your travels around the world, have you had a chance to talk to people who've been faced with this kind of choice? Absolutely. Yeah. In Turkey, for instance, in 2008, Easter time, there were three Christians who were martyred there. Um, and I uh, have a friend in Turkey who's um, who was there. He actually alerted the police that these guys had taken him captive in a Christian publishing house and, uh, and, and were killing them. And so the police came and surrounded and caught all the perpetrators of that crime. So it's, I mean, like talking to people who were eyewitnesses of those who were giving up their life. How do you hear good news in this for you? And, and what do you want to say to people? It gives me courage to stand on my convictions. Um, I follow God, uh, I follow Jesus Christ, and, uh, and it, it gives me courage to see these men stand for their faith, and so I can do the same. If I face persecution or ridicule for being a Christian, it encourages me to also be courageous and be willing to stand for what I believe in and, and not fear, not be afraid of what it's going to do to my reputation or even physically. We have a lot of things that we could be anxious about, even COVID-19 that we're in now, but, um, but our lives are preserved beyond that. You know, I'm, I'm loved by a God who's not subject to death um, and, and can preserve the relationship even beyond and through death. That's the good news that I'm hearing from this story, too, is that God can save me and God can save you from the fire even if you burn, you know, and whether you come out of the fire not smelling like smoke at all or whether you come out, you know, it, you do get burned, that God will save you regardless of, of what happens in the furnace. Yeah, that's the best news in the story for me too because it's so practical. Like I can apply it to my life right away because bad things are going to happen to me. Awful things might happen to me. I will die. But that doesn't mean that God is not with me. You know, God promises me life, but he doesn't promise it to me forever here in the way that I think it will be. There are martyrs. They died. Well, God, where are you? You said you'd always be with me. You know, how did this martyr die? But then in Revelation, you know, uh, doesn't John says, like, who are those people in the white robes right by the altar, right by the throne? He's like, oh, those are the martyrs. Those are the people who died for me. Right by God, right by his throne. They're right with him. And so even though these awful bad things will happen like to all of us, it doesn't mean that God's not there. He's taking care of us in a way that we might not get right now. But in that eternal perspective, like, like you were saying, that they're right by the altar, they're right by the throne of God. He's, he's, they're with him, just maybe not in the way that we thought. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Trouble, persecution, hardship? No, none of these things can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8. Well, and I think it goes back to that eternal perspective that to know that there's life outside of this little game. You know, we call this little, we call this thing mortal life. What? 70, 80, 90 years at best. And if you keep it in perspective that it's a game and, and we want to play it well, but there's, there's a bigger life outside of this, this little mortal life that we live now. Look for Speaking of Jesus wherever you find podcasts. Taught by 
our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. This has been a presentation of Lutheran Hour Ministries. and third Wednesday mornings each month at 9.05 a.m., Robert Colin with On Top of the World will be our guest as we learn all about the exciting lifestyle and new home choices available at Ocala's premier adult active community, On Top of the World. From time to time, Robert will bring guests and you're sure to enjoy our little chats. After all, you deserve the world and we bring it to you. folks. R.L. here for Dairy Queen again to tell you about what's hot and what's not. Dairy Queen has some of the best char-grilled chicken breasts on earth as well as their chicken breast salad. And the burgers are exceptional. Cooked on a real grill for the best flavor and less fat. And for dessert, blizzards are unequal to personally banana split is my all-time favorite. Dairy Queen Silver Springs where we always treat you like kings and queens. The NFL alumni is sponsoring a Clay for Kids sporting event to benefit Champions for Champions. The event will take place at the Robinson Ranch in English, Florida on Saturday, October 24th. Call 866-996-2182 for details. The NFL alumni will provide gift bags, breakfast, lunch, and prizes. Call 866-996-2182 for details. Clay for Kids. Call 866-996-2182 for details. Hosted by the NFL alumni. Hello, my friend. I'm James Snyder, pastor of the Family of God Fellowship, located in Silver Spring Shores. Welcome to Sunday Joy. If you don't have a home church, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to join us today for worship. I'll give you details of our church in a few moments. The Family of God Fellowship exists to glorify God and celebrate the Christian experience through fellowship, discipleship, and stewardship. It's a privilege to share with you these few moments together. The Bible says, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. I invite you to join my friends and me for the next few moments in celebrating the joy of knowing Jesus Christ. And may the Lord bless our moments together today. Hi, I'm Steve Brown of Key Life. You know, it costs a lot to give a child life. Many times, a woman is forced to make a bad choice because of financial pressures. You can help them choose life instead of abortion. Take a stand for life. Purchase your Choose Life license plate from your county tag office today. For more, go to choose-life.org or call toll-free 877-454-1203. It was one of those weeks. At my stage in life, I have experienced a gazillion weeks. I thought about actually counting how many weeks I have lived, but I don't have that many fingers or toes. It doesn't matter how many weeks it is, really. I have lived enough weeks to know when you think you have experienced everything there is to experience, that another week shows itself. No matter how bad a week can be, another week can always be worse. On the other side, 
No matter how good a week can be, another week can be better. I do have one complaint this week. Who was that knucklehead that invented the telephone? I'd like to call him and give him a piece of my mind if I have any pieces left. Does anybody write letters anymore? <laughs> Imagine how quiet my life would be if nobody could call me. The telephone was one thing. Now we have these sophisticated gadgets called cell phones. I know why they're called cell phones. Simply because they are contemporary prisons and we are in prison for life. Now don't let this get around. There are days that I forget my cell phone and leave it at home. I must confess they are wonderful days of quietness and serenity. To have a whole day when nobody can get a hold of you has to be a day in paradise. This week has been one of those weeks that certainly qualifies for the prize for being the most aggravating week in my life. There may not be cell phones in heaven, but I'm pretty certain there are cell phones in that, uh, well, the other place. It all started on Monday morning. That's when the week starts, and my week took off this Monday morning. I start every week with a positive expectation, and it doesn't last long, but at least I start that way. I was going out the door to go to the office when the gracious mistress of the parsonage said, Do you have your phone with you? One of the things I have learned during my matrimonial adventure is not to lie, especially to my wife. I don't know what it is about wives, but they can smell a lie five hours before you tell it. At least that's what happens at my house. Oh, oh no, I said. Then I went, got my cell phone, and left for the office. I didn't turn the phone on until I got to my office and was getting situated to begin my week's work. As soon as I sat down, the phone started ringing. That may be why they call it a smartphone. It was one of those telemarketing calls that I get all the time. My memory isn't what it used to be, I know, but I cannot remember one call I answered that had anything good about it. I think if I had a good call, I would remember that. Two times a day this past week, I received that call that somebody in our house had a hearing problem. To be honest, my problem is not hearing, rather listening. I can hear everything the gracious mistress of the parsonage says, but most of the time, I'm not listening. I wonder if they have some kind of a solution for that. Obviously, the company calling has a hearing problem, or is it a listening problem? Because they have been calling every day. A similar call has been concerning the fact that somebody in our house has a pain problem. If only there was a real person talking that I could talk back to and say the only real problem I have with, is with somebody like you calling me. But it's a recorded call and I can't respond to that. Just when I was getting deep into a project, the phone would ring. When that phone rings, I'm rather frustrated. I don't mind people calling me who want to talk about some things. I just don't want these robocalls calling me with stuff I don't need. As the week developed, I got more frustrated and more frustrated. What's a person to do when there's not anything you can do about these phone calls? Of course, by Thursday, I did get an actual person that was calling me live. I was so frustrated that I didn't know exactly how to deal with this person. Do I pour all my frustration out on that person? Then I had a thought tiptoe through the tiny gray cells in my cranium. That thought was, why don't I respond to this person in gibberish? If anybody is good at gibberish, it's a pastor. I've been a pastor for so long that I have some kind of a PhD in gibberish. A few moments talking gibberish to this person on the phone released me of all my frustration for the week. Now the person on the other end of the phone was getting frustrated. Please speak English, the person kept saying. It's one of those weeks that was most frustrating, but then I learned to take that frustration and spin it into gibberish. I was thinking of what Solomon once said, it is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 23. My desire is not to let the words of fools frustrate me, but to nourish my mind and soul on the wisdom of God. An unexpected pregnancy can turn a young woman's life upside down. The House of One in Faith in Ocala gives these young women a place to live in privacy and comfort 
under the Christian care of counselors who will guide and protect both the woman and her unborn child. The House of One in Faith is confidential, loving, and free. For more information, call 352-687-8895. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is Lee Helsell, editor of the South Marion Citizen, inviting you to read Pastor Snyder's religion column, Out to Pastor, each Friday. Take your Bible and turn with me to the third epistle of John. The third epistle of John. Only one chapter has 14 verses. And I'd like to begin looking at this epistle today. Let me read the first four verses. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wished above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And here is a very wonderful beginning to this little epistle, this little letter that John has. And uh, most people, uh, we, we, we take it out of context. For example, uh, he says in verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. And a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people, take this out of context, and has developed what is called the prosperity gospel. And what they say is that God wants you to prosper. Well, John here is saying, I hope that you prosper uh, in, in health and even as your soul prospereth. He's not talking, talking about money. And when you have a preacher on TV that begins talking about money, about money, turn it off because you know you have somebody that is not talking the truth. Now look what Paul or John is saying here. Uh, he's talking about the fact that, uh, verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And the truth that he's talking about is the truth of the Word of God. You see, one verse of Scripture does not define any doctrine. If it's not true in another verse or other verses, it's not true. It's misunderstood. And when Paul or John says, I keep calling him Paul, forgive me, but when John says, I wish thy soul prosperous, he's not talking about what these preachers on TV are talking about. You need to understand that the prosperity that John is talking about has to do with their spiritual development and their growth in the Lord, their growth in the truth. We need to know the truth. And, and I don't like it when somebody says, well, the truth will set you free. They take it completely out of context. And what that verse is saying is the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ, and it's Jesus Christ that will set you free, free from your sin, free from the world, free from damnation. And so when we come to this word prosperity here, it is not saying that God wants you to be wealthy. Well, if that is true, then why didn't it work with the disciples and the apostles and the early church? Why didn't it work with them? Why didn't it work with John, who is talking about it? John is probably, I don't know, 80, 90 years old. Uh, when, when he's writing this, he's nearing the end of his life. And, and he dies in prison and, and all of that kind of stuff. So we need to understand the word prosperity in the context of who is writing it, the Apostle John, and the context of where he is writing it and to whom is he writing it. And we have these preachers that have multi-million dollar homes, several of them, and, and jets and all of that kind of stuff. 
what blasphemy, now I know some people just turned me off, but what blasphemy is this when it comes to the real gospel of Jesus Christ, to the real truth? And, and John says, my greatest joy is that you're walking in the truth. That's what we need to do today to walk in the truth. What is the truth? Well, the truth isn't what somebody says. The truth is what the Bible says what the Bible says, and truth cannot be established, as I said, on one verse. It has to be all through the Bible. It takes all of the Bible to make it the Word of God. And so I can take one verse out of context, and I can twist it for my own advantage, and that is heresy. Anybody who does that, they are a heretic. It is heresy. We need to come back to what the Bible really says. Now, I know the, the trend today is that we need to interpret the Bible through the culture that, that we're living in right now. No, no, we got it backwards. We need to interpret the culture through the Bible that God has given us. And, and the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says, no one does good, no, not one. And we need to understand that we are not to cowtail <laughs> to the culture around us. We are to rebuke the culture. We are to stand against the culture. We are to re uh, preach against it. And yet we find that so far, far, there's a, oh, there's some out there doing it, but not very many anymore. Because if we, if we can placate to the culture, then, then, then we can be successful. A successful church has nothing to do with numbers. A successful church has everything to do with walking in the truth, as John is talking about here. If we are walking in the truth, teaching the truth, living the truth, then we are a New Testament church. And I know I'm, I may be referred to as a legalist, and I don't, I don't mind that at all. A legalist is someone who believes exactly what the Bible says and is living according to that. Now, I'm not a judgmentalist. I don't, a judgmentalist says, you have to live like me, like my interpretation. No, no, I'm not that. I'm a legalist. I read the Word of God, and I want to live according to that. I want to adjust my life according to what the Bible says. And I know it's going to be hard. I know there's things I have to give up. There's things I have to turn away from. But it is worth it all when I see Jesus Christ face to face. And so John is writing to this, this church here, and he is congratulating them on walking the truth. And if you go back to that time, you will discover that churches were persecuted. Christians were persecuted. John is in prison. He's the last of the disciples to die uh, of martyrs. Why well, he wasn't really killed. He died in prison, but he was the last one there. And all of them were persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And brother and sister, we're getting to that point in our own country today, around the world, in China, in Africa, wherever you want to go, Christians, do you realize this? Christians are being martyred every day because they stand for Christ. It's coming to our country, my friend. Either you're going to be able to stand for Christ and take the consequences, or you're going to uh, kowtow to the world, and beloved, there are consequences to that. You see, it's either God or the world. You have a choice. It's either following God and, and, and the, the, the rules and regulations that he lays down, or it is following the world, and there are consequences on two sides of the fence. I'd rather have the consequences in following Jesus than following the world. We know what that is. Look, look at the world. Watch the news. Uh, don't watch it too much or you get depressed. But look what's happening in the world. Uh, my friend, that's what the world is about. The world is about hate and violence and, and murder and, and sexual impurity and on and on we could go. John is writing to this church and he's saying, my great, great joy is that you're walking in the truth. It costs something, as I said, to walk in the truth, but it is something that is important for me as a believer. 
Now, we don't, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to be legalistic. Oh, don't be legalistic. But isn't it interesting that we want our doctor to be legalistic? We want the mechanic to work on our engine to be legalistic. We want everybody in our life to be legalistic, but religion. Religion can flip and flop and flam and flow as long as everybody is pleased. I want to tell you something. If you're really preaching the gospel, very few people are going to be pleased. You're going to turn a lot of people away because the enemy is against the Word of God. John writes and says, My great joy is that you're following the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 3. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. John is in some prison somewhere, a political prisoner here. And uh, some friends came and, and shared with him the testimony that he re refers to here. And, and the thing that he rejoiced in prison was that those believers were walking in the truth. I find that quite a strange, don't you? Don't you think he should have been worried about how can I get out of here? What can I do to get out? Because if I get out, I can do something for the Lord. Well, maybe sometimes you can do more for the Lord in prison as John did than anywhere else. And so his prosperity that he wants on these believers has nothing to do with money or possessions, but rather it has everything to do with walking in the truth. It has everything to do with knowing Jesus Christ and living for him every moment of every day. And that is the great joy that we have. Oh, the love of Christ surrounds us so much. Here's the choice. We either love God or we love the world. You can't love both. Uh, what, remember what Jesus said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. You can't combine them. There has to be a separation there. And in my life as a Christian, I need to separate myself from the world. How do I do that? Get into the Word of God. Read the Scriptures. Get with brothers and sisters in the Lord. And you will begin to develop and understand what it means to separate yourself from the world. We can't have, you know, this, this old saying, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Uh, once you eat it, it's gone. And my friend, let me say it this way, you can't have the world and Christ at the same time. You've got a choice here. You've got a choice. And, and with that choice comes a consequence. If you choose the world, you're going to have pleasure for a limited amount of time, and then, poof, you're gone. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you're going to have some rough times <laughs> while you're living here. But then at that last moment, you're going to absent from the body, present with the Lord, and you're going to spend all of eternity enjoying the richness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the choice is yours. Do you want to walk with the world or walk with Christ? Both of them have consequences. I'm, I'm, I'm from the, the hippie generation. I wasn't a hippie. Uh, but I'm from the hippie generation, and, and I knew some people, some of my friends were hippies, and they had tattoos and all of that kind of stuff. And I remember seeing somebody not too long ago, I guess he was probably close to 70, <laughs> and uh, all, all the tattoos, he was so wrinkled, you couldn't understand what the tattoos were, you know. And I'm not against tattoos. If, if you want to poison your body with, with ink or whatever that is, that's fine with me. But what he intended it was as the beginning and the end, it wasn't exactly what he wanted. You see, if you make the choices in your life based upon your understanding at the time, you're always going to make a mistake. But when I make a choice based upon the Word of God, when I'm walking in the truth, when I'm walking with and in fellowship with other believers, my choices are going to be that much better because I will have a, a, a foundation, that foundation, the Word of God, the fellowship of believers, and, and all that goes with that. And so I'll be able to make choices that at the time don't seem right, but in the end turn out to be the right choice. Now what about you? Are you, are you really walking in the light? Are you walking in the truth? Or are you walking in the world? If we walk in the world, then we have all of the blessings of the world. You can, what, what, are those the blessings that you want? When we walk with the Lord, we have all of the blessings of the Lord. 
and that's the thing that I want. And, and that's what John saw in the people that he had ministered to before he went into prison. That's what John saw in these brothers and sisters in the Lord. His encouragement came not from his situation, but rather his encouragement came from the people that had responded to the truth as he had preached it. I think of uh, Peter walking on the water. Remember that story? And, and they were out, and Jesus was gone, and, and they were out in the middle of the, the lake there somewhere, and the, there was rough ties and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, they see this man walking towards them, and they think, at first, it's a ghost. It turns out to be Jesus. And, and Peter, being the kind of guy that he is, said, Lord, if it's really you, why don't you bid me to come walk out towards you? Jesus opened up his arm and says, come on, Peter, come on. Peter stepped out of that boat. I would have loved to have been there. Peter stepped out of that boat, and I can imagine the rest of the apostles are, going, <gasps> you know, in, in, in shock. And Peter begins walking towards Jesus. As long as his eyes were on Jesus, he was walking on the water, and he was not being uh, affected did by his circumstances. Now, here's the next step. When he becomes involved with his circumstances and looks down away from Christ, he falls into it, and Christ had to reach his hand out and save him. And, and see, that's the whole story here. Am I walking facing Jesus, or am I so concerned about my circumstances that I'm going to turn away from Jesus? And when I do that, I fall into the depth of those circumstances. Oh, my brother and sister, keep your eyes on the Lord. I know it's difficult. I know in the times in which we live, there, there's a lot of problems and difficulties doing that. But brother, if we keep our eyes on the Lord, it doesn't matter how bad it gets. It can't get too bad to keep us and, and save us from falling into the depths of our circumstances. Walking in the truth, John says, I'm so proud of you. My heart is full of, full of joy to realize that you've listened to the truth and you are now walking in the truth. There's a lot of people who know the truth, but there's very few people who are walking the truth. It's one thing to know what the Bible says, and it's another thing to live according to what the Bible says. And that's what John is talking about here. We're walking the truth. We're living the truth. We're accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And then we are experiencing that walking on the water above our circumstances, above all of our problems, and we're looking to the Lord Jesus Christ. The thing that will bring joy and happiness to my life is when my heart is fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and then ver back to verse 2. And brethren, Beloved, I wished above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And what he is saying is, I, I just wish, wish that the outside of you was just as prosperous as the inside of you. I just wish that your, your walk with the Lord would, be, would, would saturate every aspect of your life. You see, being a Christian doesn't mean I'm going to die and then go to heaven. Now, that is true, but that isn't what being a Christian is all about. Being a Christian is that I accept Christ as my Savior, and I begin living a transformed life, a life that is being transformed by the Holy Spirit, and I'm living and walking in the truth. And remember when, when Moses came off of the mountain, he didn't know his, his face was shining, <laughs> did he? He didn't know that. And many times when I walk out, I'm, and when I'm really fellowshipping with the Lord, I don't realize that the shine of God's greatness and glory and mercy and peace and everything else is shining forth from my life, which means there are certain people that's going to run away, and then there's a certain people that's going to come and seek that, that presence of the Lord that has really taken place in my heart. I want to be what Jesus wants me to be. And I want to shine out into the world all of the reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you know of a young woman burdened with an unwanted pregnancy, please tell her about the House of One in Faith in Ocala. 
This free and confidential residence helps pregnant teen girls in a family atmosphere while forming an adoption plan. Part of the Ministry of Family of God Fellowship, the House of One in Faith offers a safe, loving environment. Call 352-687-8895 for more information. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word today. Holy Spirit, thank you for ministering to our hearts. And we pray today for those who are listening. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you might minister to their hearts in a way that will lift them up above the circumstances that they're in. We pray for our country, O Father. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would work out through our country the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be with those who are suffering, and we ask, Lord, that in all things you will be honored and praised. For we ask this, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for joining us today for Sunday Joy. I trust it's been an uplifting time for you. I know we enjoyed putting this little program together. Let me take this opportunity to invite you to visit the Family of God Fellowship. We are one of the friendliest churches you could ever visit, and I'm sure one visit will convince you of this very thing. Our church is located at 1471 Pine Road, out in the Silver Springs Shores area. Our Sunday morning worship service is at 1030, where we sing hymns and choruses to the glory of God as well as share testimonies of God's amazing grace. There's a fully staffed nursery for infants and an exciting children's church program and always a Bible-based sermon to help you in your daily life. And then each Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, we have a special evening service for all ages. Uh, We have a special program for children, including Word of Life clubs and uh, special programs for the younger kids where they make arts and crafts and play games and sing hymns and learn Bible stories. The adults also are involved in a Bible study program. And I want you to consider this to be your personal invitation to join our church family and me today as we worship God and give Him glory. Again, our church is located at 1471 Pine Road, which is in Silver Springs Shores. For directions to our church, simply call us at 687-4240. That's 687-4240. I look forward to seeing you in church this Sunday. Again, thank you for joining us today. And until next week, may God richly bless you, my friend. W-O-C-A, putting the local back into radio. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. USA.